Becoming anything he wants to be. Imagine cold so cold that bare skin freezes almost instantly. Imagine wind so strong that it could blow you over and deep icy cracks you might fall into at any moment. Now picture a group of mountain climbers making their way through this environment to the highest spot in the world. One of the climbers is Eric Weyenmayer. On May 25, 2001, Eric did make it to the top of Mount Everest, the tallest mountain on earth. But Eric could not see the view from the top. He could not even see the snow and ice all around him. He could only feel them because he is blind. Eric is the only blind person ever to reach the top of the world. A hard beginning. Eric was born with a rare eye disease. He could never see very well. By the time he was 13, the disease had made him blind. People often think of all the things a blind person can't do because he or she can't see. Eric's father encouraged Eric to think about the things he could do. Eric learned that lesson well. It wasn't always easy. At first, Eric was angry when he lost his sight. He refused to learn Braille, a writing and reading system for blind people. He failed math his first year in high school because he could not read the Braille textbook. Then Eric started wrestling. It was a sport where his blindness did not slow him. He learned Braille and his grades improved. He became the captain of the wrestling team. One year, he won second place in the state wrestling championship. The Thrill of the Climb When he was 16, Eric went rock climbing for the first time. The experience changed his life. He loved the feel of the wind and the rock under his hands. Different rocks had different textures. This thrilled him and made him want to climb more and more. Yet Eric did not want only to follow other climbers. Blind people had climbed that way for a long time. Eric wanted to lead. He wanted to find the toe holds and places for his hands by touch. One night, he proved he could lead. He was climbing with a partner and they finished after dark. The partner had forgotten his helmet light. He could not see to climb down, but Eric could see with his hands. He led the climb back down to safety. Climbing the Seven Summits Soon Eric began climbing mountains. He discovered he could use long poles to lean on and help him feel the ground. He could also use his hearing to sense when a cliff was in front of him or when the ground dropped off. Sometimes climbers in front of him wore bells or tapped their ice axes against rocks to help direct him. In 1995, Eric climbed to the top of Denali Peak, Mount McKinley in Alaska. The TV news reported it. A blind man had climbed the tallest mountain in North America. It was the first of the seven summits that Eric went on to climb. These mountains are the highest on each of the seven continents. Over the next seven years, Eric climbed them all. Eric wants other people to think about what they can do and not what they cannot do, just as he has done. A great athlete, Eric competes in tandem bicycle races. Tandem bikes are for two riders. Not just a world-class climber. Eric didn't stop at mountain climbing. At one time, he was a teacher and a wrestling coach. He is also a skydiver. He runs marathon races. He skis. He scuba dives. He does long-distance bike rides. You can never tell Eric that blindness is a handicap. Now Eric speaks and teaches all around the world. He has written two books. The message in each is that hardships can make us stronger and better people. One of his books is called Touch the Top of the World. The story was made into a movie. Eric also made a movie called Farther Than the Eye Can See. It is an adventure film about climbing Mount Everest. Eric used the movie to raise more than half a million dollars for charity. He uses his success to help form a group called No Barriers. The group finds ways to help people with disabilities overcome the barriers in their lives. Today, Eric is trying to help blind people learn to read and write. He wants everyone who cannot see to learn Braille. He speaks all over the world to help make this happen. Eric was once asked if he believes anything is possible. He answered that there are limits. For example, he cannot drive a car. But, he added, there are good questions and bad questions in life. The bad questions are what-if questions. What if I were smarter or stronger? What if I could see? Those are dead-end questions. A good question is, how do I do as much as I can with what I have?